Where are you now? I asked as I watched a baseball game with my brother. That's when my certainty about my husband's lies solidified. His brother wasn't in any condition to watch a baseball game right now. Once I realized all of this, I resolved to take revenge on my husband. I found unlikely allies for this. My name is Sarah. I'm 27 years old, a nurse at a university hospital. All jobs are tough, but being a nurse means dealing with people's lives. While I don't directly intervene as a doctor would, that everyday support and minor treatments I perform come with a weight of responsibility not much different. When I was in elementary school, I had to be hospitalized due to an illness. Despite being young, I felt a lot of anxiety, crying alone when my parents couldn't visit me due to work. But the nurse who cared for me saved my heart during those times. Sarah, it's okay if you don't hold back when you're feeling lonely. It's definitely going to get better. Let's hang in there a little longer, she'd encourage me every day. Thanks to her, I overcame the hardships of my hospital stay. After being discharged, I admired her and decided to become a nurse. I studied hard to achieve my dream, and now it's been five years since I've become a nurse. The job is certainly challenging, but every time I see a patient smile, I genuinely feel glad to be doing this work. I'm fortunate to have my current job, and one of the reasons is my husband, Bob, whom I married a year ago. I first met Bob at a party, and once we started talking, we found out we had a lot in common. We hit it off pretty quickly, leading to us dating. After two years of dating, he proposed to me. I love you, Sarah. You put your heart and soul into everything you do. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, he said. Are you sure? Do you really want to be with me? I asked. Why would you even question it? I want to be with you because you're Sarah. So, I want you to get married to me, he replied. Yeah, I want to be with you too, Bob, I said and we officially tied the knot a year ago. But there's one thing that's been bothering me, he doesn't get along well with his parents. Ideally, we would have wanted to hold our wedding ceremony when we got our marriage license, but he refused. He didn't want to have anything to do with his parents. So when we went to pay a visit to his parents to announce our marriage, it was hard to set a date. We somehow managed to pay a visit, but my husband was in a bad mood the entire time, and we only stayed for 30 minutes. We ended up getting married without having much of a conversation with my in-laws. Of course, I'd like my in-laws to attend our wedding ceremony too. So, I decided to be honest about how I feel. Bob, can we talk for a moment? I asked. What's up? He replied. It's about your parents. We also have the ceremony to think about so I think we should go see them and have a proper discussion, I suggested. My husband let out a deep sigh and responded with an annoyed expression. Didn't I tell you before that I don't want to talk about my parents? As far as I'm concerned, I don't care if we don't invite anyone to our wedding. But we should at least invite your parents, Bob. That's enough. If you insist on having family members there, we can just ask my brother. Isn't that good enough? I reasoned. Well, I'd love to have your brother attend. But you're really persistent, Sarah. This is a matter of my family, so please don't meddle too much, he said with another sigh before leaving the living room. Alone in the room, I slumped on the couch, staring blankly at the ceiling, overwhelmed by a feeling of emptiness. It was such a shame that we were distant from my father-in-law and mother-in-law. They were such nice people. I wanted them to attend the ceremony, but what could I do to make my husband understand? Even after countless attempts, whenever I suggested, Let's go see your parents, my husband flat out refused. At some point, he would get angry just by mentioning them. One day, my brother-in-law and his wife were coming to visit us at our apartment. We had dinner together once when we reported our marriage, but although they lived in a neighboring city, it was the first time they visited us since our marriage. After 10 o'clock, our apartment buzzer rang. When I opened the door, there stood my brother-in-law Jake and his wife Emily. Hello Jake, it's been a while, I greeted. Jake showed a bright smile. Hey, Sarah. Long time no see. I apologize for dropping by unexpectedly. Hope you don't mind. Oh, not at all. Bob is waiting inside. Please come in, I replied. Awesome, thanks. Well, here I come, said Jake, following me inside. Emily took off her shoes and called out a greeting, but there was no response from her. Mitchy not hear me, wondered Emily. She didn't talk much last time we met either. I wish we could be better friends. As they enjoyed some casual chatter while having cake, the atmosphere began to lighten. Since they decided to have lunch, I started preparing the meal. As I was getting things ready, my brother-in-law entered the kitchen. Sarah, 
I heard from our folks you haven't visited home since you got married, he remarked. Ah, uh, yes. Well, it's Bob, isn't it? He doesn't get along well with Dad, right? I admitted. That's right. I want my in-laws to come to our wedding, but Bob is hesitant, I confessed. Upon hearing my words, my brother-in-law made a troubled face. After pondering a bit, he said apologetically, I'm sorry. Bob's being stubborn. I wish there was something I could do about it. I'm sorry to cause you trouble, brother-in-law. No, no, I'm the one who should apologize for not being able to do anything. I'll try to talk to Bob about it indirectly. Really? Thank you. That would be a great help. Meanwhile, my husband and sister-in-law were having fun playing mobile games. Despite my worries, they seemed to be enjoying themselves. I started to feel frustrated with my husband. Just as my brother-in-law and his wife were about to leave, my husband spoke up in a stern voice. Hey, what's up? Did you say something to my brother? Why do you ask? When we were weaving, my brother said you should think about Sarah and confront our parents. You were chatting with him while making lunch, right? You stirred up something unnecessary, didn't you? With a look I'd never seen before, my husband glared at me. Silenced by the awkwardness, I was unable to respond before he continued. You know, isn't it unfair to talk to my brother about our parents, knowing that I don't want to be involved with them? No, I didn't mean, I'm turned off. I'm not feeling like doing the wedding anymore. What? What? I started, but he clicked his tongue loudly and left the house. He didn't come back until the next day. Since that day, my relationship with Bob has been strained. Our conversations dwindled to the bare minimum, and the once light-hearted atmosphere was gone. Then my husband's absences began to increase gradually, especially on holidays. He was almost never home. Suspicion crept in as he started going out more often. Gathering my courage, I decided to confront him. Hey, you've been going out a lot on your days off recently. Where do you go? I asked. Does it matter? Do I need to report everything to you? He replied sharply. What's with that tone? Do you have a reason you can't tell me? I pressed, half-jokingly. His eyebrows shot up at my question. Flustered, he stammered. I, I've been going to my parents' house. Parents' house? Bob's? I clarified, surprised. Really? I mean, with the wedding coming up, Sarah wanted my parents to join us, remember? He explained hastily. Well, yeah, but if that's the case, shouldn't I go too? I inquired. No, no, it's fine. My parents would feel uncomfortable with Sarah around anyway. That's the situation, so don't worry about it. He ended the conversation almost forcefully, leaving no room for my input. After that, he continued to visit his parents' house on his days off. I expressed my desire to accompany him, but he never agreed. Then, one day while I was at work in the hospital, a familiar patient was brought in on an emergency basis. What? Brother-in-law? I exclaimed, recognizing him. Even when I called out to him, his response was sluggish and his body temperature was high. He was also having mild convulsions. According to the doctor, it was probably heat stroke. I quickly tried to call his wife, but there was no answer, just continued ringing. I was sure his wife was a homemaker, so why wasn't she picking up the phone, especially when my brother-in-law was in such a condition? What should I do? But panicking won't help. I decided to switch gears and call my husband. However, like my brother-in-law's wife, he didn't pick up the phone. My husband should be at his parents' house today, so I decided to try calling their house. Since our marriage, I haven't been able to meet or even properly talk with my in-laws. They might not think highly of me, but I can't care about that right now. When I dialed the landline of their house, after a few rings, my mother-in-law picked up the phone. Um, this is Sarah. I apologize for not being in touch for so long, mother-in-law. Oh, Sarah, it's been a long time. Have you been doing well? Yes, thanks to you. I'm sorry I haven't been able to visit. Don't worry about that. I'm glad to hear you're doing well, Sarah. And is Bob doing well? Yes, he's well. Wait. What? I was taken aback by my mother-in-law's words. My husband should be at his parents' house right now. Confused, I hesitantly asked my mother-in-law, Um, mother-in-law, isn't Bob there now? Bob, I haven't seen him since he introduced you when you got married. What? I thought he's been visiting almost every week. There's no way you know Bob dislikes us, don't you, Sarah? My husband hadn't been going to his parents' house. What does this mean? Wasn't he supposed to go back home to smooth things over with his parents in preparation for the wedding? The more I thought about it, the more confused I became. To confirm the facts, I called Bob again. 
Of course, he didn't pick up at first, but I kept calling persistently, over and over again. After about the tenth call, he finally answered the phone. He spoke in a noticeably irritated tone. What is it? You keep calling. I'm busy. Busy? Even though you haven't even been to your parents' house? Ha, how do you? I just had a chat with my mother-in-law on the phone. Hey, what's the deal? It's not just today. You haven't been visiting your parents' home all this time, right? Well, well, that's... Explain it properly. Where are you right now? As I waited silently for his answer, my husband nonchalantly said, I'm watching baseball with Jake. Baseball? Yeah, you can hear it, can't you? The cheaters of watching the game. Jake and I are having a blast right now. At that moment, waves of pent-up anger overtook my restraint. Indeed, behind my husband, lively voices could be heard. Judging from the sounds, it seemed true that they were at a baseball game. But that's not the issue. The main issue was that my husband was lying big time. How should I confront him, holding back my anger? I pondered for a moment, then spoke up. Hey Bob, how long are you going to be on the phone? Emily, my sister-in-law, whose voice I could recognize through the phone, chimed in. There was no mistaking it since we just met the other day. Realizing that the call had been disconnected and only the busy signal was echoing in my ear, I understood. Everything was a lie. I couldn't forgive this. At this rate, I'll corner him by any means necessary. With a newfound resolve, I headed to Jake's place. Fortunately, his condition had already stabilized and he was sleeping soundly. Just as I was about to leave the room, opening the door, a voice came from behind me. Sarah? Oh, Jake, are you okay? I asked. Yeah, I'm fine. It was a heat stroke, huh? I was feeling sluggish, but I was so busy that I didn't have time to hydrate. Please be careful. I was really surprised when you were brought in. Ha, huh, sorry, sorry. So why are you here, Sarah? Jake inquired. Oh, well, actually, I began. I informed Jake that my husband might be with Emily at the moment, instead of being surprised to Jake smirked. I see you've noticed, Sarah. By the way you're saying it, Jake, did you know about this all along? I asked. Yeah, well, I found out about a month ago, and I just started gathering evidence. But I've got more than enough evidence now, so don't worry, Jake reassured me. I see. I'm sorry. I didn't know anything, Jake admitted. No, it's okay. I was waiting for the right timing to tell you because I thought it would be too harsh on you. Though it turned out this way, I feel like I can finally move on. I replied weakly, though I felt an immense dislike for the two who made Jake and me feel this way. Jake laughed weakly, but he seemed somewhat lonely. At the same time, I waited for my brother-in-law's recovery, and then we headed to his parents' house together. Upon explaining the sequence of events to my in-laws, they were momentarily at a loss for words. After learning the truth, with apologetic looks, they began to apologize. Sarah, we're sorry for our foolish son's affair. We never expected this to happen, they said. Please don't apologize. I'm okay, I assured them. But right, honey? Yes, apologies won't fix this. We're truly sorry, my husband's father added. It's okay. Instead, would you lend me and your son a little help? I proposed to my in-laws. My brother-in-law and I each made simultaneous calls to his wife and my husband. Perhaps surprised to be called at the same time, Emily and my husband picked up the phone immediately. Hello? Sarah, what's up? What do you mean, what's up? You're with Emily right now, aren't you? I confronted my husband. What are you talking about? Why would I be with my brother's wife? He replied, but I heard Emily's voice in the background. When I called earlier, and your brother knows everything, we've got concrete evidence of the affair, I asserted, my anger boiling over. Despite the evidence, my husband kept spouting nonsense, claiming it was a misunderstanding and he just happened to run into her. I was fed up with his lack of remorse and his constant prioritization of self-preservation, even at this point. Out of sheer anger and feeling betrayed, I raised my voice, shut up, misunderstanding. What are you saying? At this point, do you think such excuses will work? You took advantage of my feelings and betrayed me in the worst possible way. I will never forgive you. I'm divorcing you, you scum. Wait, I didn't intend a divorce. What? How dare you say that after cheating on me? Just so you know, I have no intention of getting back with you or that woman. I hope you both go to hell. Your parents won't help you anymore. Suffer for the rest of your life, regretting what you've done, you piece of trash. Without waiting for his response, I hung up. 
shortly after my brother-in-law and I went to the city office to get divorce papers. Eventually, my husband and I divorced amicably. Initially reluctant, he finally signed the divorce papers after being persuaded by his parents. Of course, my brother-in-law's divorce was also finalized. We both demanded substantial alimony from them. Later, I found out that my ex-husband had been involved with my brother-in-law's wife for quite some time. Apparently, he was meeting her during lunch breaks and after work, and their affair was exposed at the worst possible time by their co-workers. As a result, his reputation at work plummeted. Unable to withstand the judgment from his colleagues, he eventually quit his job after repeated absences. My brother-in-law's wife, who was a stay-at-home wife, also had her life turned upside down. She lived with my ex-husband for a while after the divorce, but as their financial situation worsened, their arguments increased and they broke up within a few months. For a while, she won't be able to live a decent life. On my end, surprisingly, I've been getting by day to day without much fuss. Right after my divorce, I moved to an apartment near work, living the carefree life. I still keep in regular contact with my brother-in-law and my ex-in-laws. Where I am today is thanks to them. They will always be important people to me, and that will never change. I'll make sure to live in a way that won't bring shame to them. I'll prove that I can be happy on my own. That's the solemn promise I made to myself.